Welcome to the John Holmes Mass Spectrometry Facility. I'm Sharon Curtis and I am going to try and explain to you how a quadrupole mass spectrometer works. Uh, so I've collected together from the lab various show and tell items and you're looking straight at a triple quadrupole. Uh, so here is the top quad where the ions would enter the quadrupole and down through the middle here and then uh, they go down into the collision cell which is, again is another quadrupole um, and then down here is the third quadrupole and there's a small detector at the bottom. So that is a triple quadrupole my spectrometer. Most of you um, will uh, be familiar with single quads uh, because your LCs and your GCs generally have a single quadrupole um, and they are cheap and uh, hence the reason they are so popular in, in many uh, analytical and labs and lots of professors have them. So this is the internal workings of a little single quad that you would find in a GC mass spectrometer. So we have uh, the ionization region here and once we've made ions we need to separate them according to their mass to charge ratio and the quadrupole does that and that is the centerpiece here. And then of course we need to detect those ions uh, so we know when, when we have, what abundance we have of any particular mass to charge. Um, so here is another quadrupole. Uh, there are three quadrupoles in a row and actually at the beginning of this quadrupole we have a lens uh, and this lens is actually a hexapole. So you can see there are, are six rods. Uh, so quadrupoles or the rods are, are um, often used as um, focusing lenses. Um, to uh, help with the uh, kinetic energies of our molecules. So after ionization, uh, our molecules will be going in all sorts of different directions uh, and we need to uh, focus them and send them down through the quadrupoles. And so often you'll have lenses like a hexapole um, to guide them down. Uh, and then we have one quadrupole here. This, well, this particular uh, instrument has a collision cell here and then another quadrupole down through, down through here and eventually we would end up at the detector. So what are the quadrupoles? They are highly machined rods that have been constructed in a particular way and they're held in place and that positioning must stay uh, that way. And they have um, an alternating current, current and a DC voltage put across them, which uh, uh, the alternating current creates an RF um, and depending on our combinations of RF and DC ratio depends on what mass to charge ions will be stable at any one point uh, as our ions transition down the quadrupoles. So if we can scan different uh, RF and different uh, DC voltages, uh, different ions will, will pass down through to the detector at uh, different combinations and in that way we can scan from low masses to high masses. Um, now uh, the wonderful thing about the quadrupole is its ability to actually be able to choose specific masses. So particular uh, ACE, uh, RF and DC voltages uh, can be set by the instrument software because it's all been carefully calibrated, can be set by the instrument software to actually transmit only ions of a particular uh, mass to charge ratio and you can set your instrument up to do um, single line monitoring scans or multi uh, reaction monitoring scans um, which is something that quadrupoles are used frequently to do they're very fast uh, and they have a lot of uses you can uh, actually get your quadrupole to um, look at the frequencies from from back to front in which you look at the uh, emergence of a particular ion and then you can uh, uh, scan back to the first quadrupole to be able to see where that ion originated from. So you can do uh, reaction monitoring that way. Uh, you can also look at uh, the loss of a particular mass to charge as your uh, instrument uh, transitioned from the source all the way to the detector. So they have uh, a lot of uses, they're very fast. You can set it up to do multiple things at once. Um, so they are a very, very useful uh, instrument to have within your lab. Um, a single uh, quadrupole uh, doesn't have the capacity to do all of those uh, extra things that the triple quad does, um, but it is cheap, reliable and robust. The triple quad has a much more uh, versatility. They're not high res instruments, okay? So typically the resolution of your quadrupoles will be at best half an atomic mass unit. 
Um, so we're not going to be able to, to get uh, high resolution data from it. Um, but we can do a lot of uh, single line monitoring scans, reaction monitoring scans, uh, things that you can't do with, say, just a time of flight or a magnetic sector. Um, so uh, moving on from the quadrupole, if I were to take a quadrupole and seal the ends in, then I basically am looking at uh, creating a trap. Now the ions will get trapped in, in the middle of uh, the um, uh, rods, as it were. And if I squidge all the rods together so that they just make a, um, a circle like this, and I have a place where the ions enter, and now I'm gonna trap them inside that uh, little place. And then eventually uh, they will start to oscillate around and around and around and around. And once I get to certain frequencies, the ions can be expelled from the trap and go to the detector. And those frequencies correspond to particular um, ions of a particular mass to charge ratio. So a iron trap is like an extension of a quadrupole. I hope that explains things a little bit for you. If you would like any more information on how uh, quadrupoles or you need more details, then there certainly is plenty of um, uh, videos and uh, work out, out there for you to look at. Uh, if you are really interested in the difference uh, mass to charge ratios and the particular RF and DC voltages, um, and how that equation works, then you need to be uh, checking up uh, the, the Matho equ equation. Okay, thank you.